welcome to Caravan Escapades. I hope everybody's keeping safe and well. It's an absolutely glorious, lovely morning here today. We're currently at Sleepy Hollow um, Caravan and Motorhome Club CL just outside Worksworth. And I'm going to be doing a separate vlog on that, which you'll see somewhere either before or after this. What I want to do today is talk to you about the Camper Fry Up XL, or as other people call them, Tapanyakis. Um, this is our Tapanyaki, or this is the Camper Fry Up XL. And we use this as an alternative to a barbecue, a Kadak, that sort of stuff. It's quite convenient. It's basically an electric hot plate. So what it consists of is a hot plate like this, um, and then it, so you do all your cooking and everything else on here. Then you've got a little area there where all your fat runs off to, and then it runs off into this little tray here, which you dispose of and empty afterwards. So that slides in there like that. So you've got your connection, which basically connects into the side of the, um, grill plate so that literally just plugs in there like that it's very easy to plug in and what you have on here is you have your temperature control or your heat settings so the thermostat going from zero all the way up to five and once you set that you've got a little red light on in here that light comes on when it's heating uh, once it gets to that set temperature it goes off then when it kicks in again then it brings up that heat and you notice if you turn it up the red light comes on so that literally just fits in here he says that just pushes in there like that so you kind of push that in there now because it's electric um, we've got the 240 volts three pin standard domestic socket in the side of it well not a standard domestic socket but a three pin socket in the side of the caravan and what I've done from that is I have one of these waterproof boxes um, so basically this keeps all our electrical connections waterproof I can put a link to this down below but as you can see in there you've got four different connections you've got points there to clamp your cables in and keep it waterproof so I use that we use that for our external lights when we've got fairy lights up and things like that as well uh, but as I say I'll put a link into that below so basically what we do is we lift up this here plug that into there like so slide that through there Oh, little rubber piece is coming out slide that into there like that lock that in place lock the box off and then literally just place it on the floor so you've now got your um, your waterproof connection so you're not lying on damp grass with mains connectors four-way blocks that sort of stuff now that is I suppose one disadvantage is that the fryer patchy only does come with a very short cable so the cable is quite short and it can cause problems but if you can get an extension lead there are other ways you can do it with waterproof blocks and that sort of stuff but what I would recommend certainly if you're going to be on damp grass use some sort of waterproof box if not try and raise that connection up off the floor so that's it that's it plugged in and basically we turn it up the red lights on I can already feel that getting warm so what we'll do now is I'll come back to you very very shortly once I start cooking so we're now well underway cooking um, we've got the bacon on the go so the bacon's here I've got a couple of eggs for me I'm gonna have some um, some bacon rolls or bacon and egg rolls or bacon banjos as, um, as we like to call them if you know why they're called bacon banjos put it down in the comments below um, yeah good old bacon banjo there's some mushrooms on the go there for Claire and these are handy we saw these I think at a show or you can buy them online as well little small pans and little small frying pans so she's got the mushrooms there with a bit of butter in there so they'll sort of warm up and um, and spread down um, you can also put a few beans in there that sort of stuff so as well as cooking your food directly on the hot plate you can put things like this on there as well just to help just to assist um, and keep the food a little bit separate relatively easy to use cooking goes quite easily you've got your temperature control here uh, I've got it set at three at the moment you can whack it up to five um, and just like any barbecue or outdoor um, cooking implement I think it's all about just sort of timing it particularly with breakfast so it all becomes ready at the same time and that's the biggest skill really so I shall carry on cooking and come back to you shortly uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I don't know whether you've come across them, but with our Kadak we have some Kadak, um, what do they call them, um, tapas, some little tapas bowls, and they're little round sort of frying pan things which you can stick on the top of the Kadak. We use them on here as well and they work really, really well, so I'll put a link to those below, and they're the Kadak tapas bowls, or tapas trays, whichever you want to call them. 
So we're just about to serve up. That's the bacon done. The mushrooms are just about there and the eggs are just finishing off. Um, I'm going to have the, as I said, the egg banjo, which is bacon and egg in a roll in my special keto rolls. Uh, and I think Claire's going to have some um, bacon and mushrooms. The other thing you can do on these hot plates is tomatoes, all sorts of things really. We're going to have a barbecue later on. So we're going to do some barbecue, barbecue food on there, that sort of stuff. So earlier on it's breakfast, now it's our evening meal. So I've got the hot plate going again and we've got kebabs on there, sausages, pork steaks, burgers, corn on the cob. So you can see how versatile it is just as a hot plate, an alternative cooking method for cooking not only your breakfast but lunch and evening meals as well. So now we've done all the cooking, it's time to start cleaning. Um, you can add some heat in here if you want just to try and um, soften it up but it's relatively pretty easy first of all I just take some sort of kitchen towel and actually just start to soak up um, and wipe up some of the fat that's left on there I mean a lot of it has gone into the little tray in the bottom and I'll show you that tray in a minute and just sort of any excess just pushing it towards that way so we're just getting this fat and all the bits off but you can see how clean and easy it's coming up um, I suppose you saw when I was cooking earlier on that actually what I was using was silicon tipped utensils just at least that way it stopped scratching the plate oh Claire thank you very much Claire Claire's brought me some flash uh, you can always use some flash kitchen on there um, spray a bit of flash kitchen on there as well if you wish you don't have to oh, that's the electrical bit flash. just drop on we're not sponsored by Flash. Yeah, we're not, Claire says we're not sponsored by Flash. It's just something she had on the side there in the caravan. So I'm just kind of wiping that over really, just to get rid of all the fat. But you can see it's not difficult um, to get cleaned up like the Kadak can be. Um, obviously that can be, if you're using a grill plate on the Kadak, it'd be difficult to clean up. But this has come up relatively easy. Still maybe very slightly greasy. Um, you can also use things like uh, these kitchen wipes, I think Flash do a similar sort of thing, so these sort of pre moistured wipes. Let's give one of those a go just to show you the different ways. So I can give that a wipe over there. Get that nice and clean. You tend to find that these do spit a bit, so once I've done this, I will give the table a wipe down. And also um, around the controller. That will have got a little bit. That will have got a little bit greasy, so we'll give that a bit of a wipe. But we'll place that on top of there. So that is that, and then we've obviously got the tray underneath. You can see um, from there, probably don't know how well you can see that the tray uh, has got full of fat and that sort of stuff. Again, what I invariably tend to do is put some kitchen towel, that sort of stuff, in there, soak that up. And I'll dispose, I'll go and dispose of that in the bin. So if you just bear with me a minute, soaked up, I'll be back in a tick. Yeah. So you can see I've soaked up most of the fat. So what I'll do again, um, thanks to Claire's flash, is spray a bit of flash inside here. I mean, you could put this through the dishwasher uh, or you could put it through the bowl and wash it sort of manually. So again, let's just get that all kind of cleaned up. So we get that nice and clean as well. We'll get one of those wipes in there again. Let's get that in the corner. All nice and clean. Needs to dry off. There we go. Now, just before sliding this back in the base, one problem or issue, not issue really, one thing that I've had with previous things, and this is not too bad, but you can find that it does get a little bit greasy around this area at the bottom. Um, oh, there's the flash just on the floor, so it's worth often just giving that a bit of a a wipe there we go 
and then we're ready literally just to slide that back in there so that's that fry up grill or the camper XL fry up grill all ready to use again there we go so I hope you found that useful that's us and the camper XL grill that's another alternative to cooking whilst you're out camping Thank you very much for watching. We really do appreciate your support. If you wouldn't mind liking, subscribing, and sharing, please leave comments below because we love to interact with you guys on the comments and that sort of stuff. Tell us what you think. Tell us about alternative cooking methods that you use. Uh, and if you do know, tell us what an egg banjo is and why it's called an egg banjo. So thank you very much. We shall see you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.